You brought butter? Yeah. My guy. Yeah. Here, let me get you a wristband as well. I was literally just sitting there like, man, I didn't forgot the damn brick. Cause I forgot salami, cheese, I forgot everything. <laughs> Love these chefs. Boom, boom. Okay, so this is a uh, Poppy's Pan. Sourdough specialist, right? Yeah, uh, I'm a chef at Black Restaurant in Provo. Ooh. Uh, Hey, my guy, thank you. Good, hey, Kevin. Good, man. You're so guy. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't tell you he was coming, huh? No, you didn't. <laughs> He's slicing that bread up, and then we're going to start our tour. Let's, let's start handing them out. I, I'll hand them out. Shit. All right. Doc was here. Another event. We League's yeah. finest, of course, here with David Jimenez. So we're going to start out. We got this champagne flutes before the tour, but it's actually what? It's called apple Weizen, so we haven't told anyone this, but it's actually half beer, half cider. So then they're gonna think they're fancy, classy <laughs> champagne, and then we'll throw them a curveball and be like, hey, <laughs> beer can be good just like champagne. Yeah, so the plan is to get a flute on the way to begin the tour. Show the whole brew house. He's gonna take us for a whirlwind, a lot of education, a couple of sips here and there, and then we hopefully to finish it over here where he's gonna really kind of highlight and dictate certain flavors, aromas, and tastes within the beers that we'll be tasting today. So I'm actually excited about that. Oh yeah, you're missing out. If you're not here, I guess you gotta come back. Hey, next time. Um, <laughs> all right, all right, everybody. We'll get today started. Thank you for being patient. Um, what we're gonna do is start with the tour first. And David has something very special for you to grab on the tour, on the walk. And then he'll explain what that actually is. And then we'll do the tour. He'll take us around, a couple of tastings, and come back here. We'll do the educational part, okay? So excited. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. We have some people still coming, but uh, I'm not going to make you wait. So let's get to it. Anything to say, David? Now, welcome, guys. Welcome to Kitos. This is the environment. I try to make it a family aspect, so welcome to family. All right. And then can we get the man in the back? Yeah, so this is the owner and CEO, <laughs> Andrew Dazenbrock. He's uh, the one that founded and is, this is his baby. Yes. So thank you for having us. We appreciate you allowing us. All right. And then this is Quincy, your Q. She's our tavern bar manager, so she's also a badass, and she's going to help us today. Hell yeah. All right. Rotate to the tour. So all I say is watch your step, all right? Just watch your step. <laughs> uh, on this tour, I'll show you guys what's happening right now. You got a production facility, right? So this is one of 17 machines in the entire world. Uh, this is called the uh, HEBS, or HEB system, High Efficiency Brew System. Uh, this is meant for production. I'm meant to save. Kitos is really uh, environmental friendly. And so we save about 20% water and grain by using this machine. So I used to brew at another facility, typical. It's called Strap Tank over in uh, Utah County. And this, it, you know, brewing is a certain technique. Throw it out the window because this one I had to learn completely different. And uh, I'm one of three people in the state that knows how to run this machine right now. Uh, when I take you up on it, it's going to look kind of weird. It's all kind of sideways and there's a uh, mash press filter is what they are. So if you look at it, basically what I'm doing is I'm extracting grain by French pressing the grain in between the sheets. So when you guys walk through it, it looks like a big ass accordion with uh, bladders inside of it you can't see. And then when I'm done with it here, it goes into one of these vessels called a fermenter or a fermentation vessel. This is where I mix everything, you'll see it. And then where I spin the beer. But there's a lot of places use this for wine pressing too. So if you guys are used to like apple pressing or wine pressing, it's the same technique, just horizontal, but this is where the magic happens. I can do the best job I want on that hot side, but the life of the beer can be totally de destroyed if we don't do this properly. So if I don't purge enough, I put too much oxygen in here, what can happen is the entire pallet of beer or anything I can that day would be ruined. So I think, to be honest, this is the most important part of the beer's life, right here. I get a lot of people saying, oh, I don't like beer, or I don't like beer flavored beer. It's just, ah. well, this is not a beer flavored beer. This is actually half cider and half beer. So this is what we can do here at Kitos. Uh, what we did is we made it with uh, half 51% malts, and then we've got fresh pressed apple juice from uh, Montana, 108 gallons of honey crisp apples, and that's what's in your glass right now. So I don't know if you guys knew if it was beer or not, but you're drinking beer, technically. This is my favorite beer right now uh, as an experience, because when you smell it, it smells like apples. It smells like champagne. It smells really bright and effervescent, but when you drink it, go ahead and drink it, and then remember what you're finishing it with. You get apples, straight apples, and then all of a sudden you got a beer finish. Beer and wine are my hobbies, and I love the fact that I can pair and make 
an experience in just a beverage. It's not just Diet Coke, it's not just water, it's not just Sprite. It's something that's got levels and it's got, it's got um, depth inside of it. So that's really cool right here. Uh, this is called uh, Pilsner Malt. So what I want you guys to do is literally grab a pinch and I want you guys to throw it in your mouth. It's that simple. A little pinch, three or four grains will do it. Throw it in your mouth and you're gonna get a flavor from this malt. Like this bread was made a certain way. Tastes like Wheaties. It tastes like Wheaties, right. <laughs> certain flavor comes from certain grain. So if you guys try it, it's like, a ah, little bready. Cereal's a great one too. So I'm gonna pass out a second one and I'll show you the depths of it, right? So this one's a different malt. This one's actually called a honey malt. So I'm gonna throw it out there, but why do you think they call it a honey malt, right? So when you guys try this one, what happens is every malt we have here at Kidos is kilns, but this one's gonna be a little more kilns specifically because we want to target certain flavors and sugars. We want to caramelize some sugars inside of the malt because we want that to come through in the beer. And so this one actually has a honey characteristic. So if you guys take some of that and pinch it and eat it, you're going to get kind of more of a raisiny, almost honey-like character from this malt. Now this next malt, I'm going to say you know, take with caution because it may look and it may sound like it's pretty, but it's, it may destroy your palate. <laughs> so this one's called this one's, this one's called chocolate malt, which sounds sexy and awesome, right? So if I were you, I'd only take about one or two. But this, you would think, has chocolate in it. You think would have these bright, you know, milk chocolate Nestle, Nesquik. But go ahead and taste it. See what happens. Different experience. So the funny thing about chocolate malt is I actually don't get chocolate flavor from chocolate malt. I get more coffee flavor from chocolate malt, right? So, and then when you guys do blacker malt, so I have behind you, you got roasted barley right here. I actually get more chocolate from that malt than an actual chocolate malt. The reason why they're calling it chocolate malt is purely for color. So we call it a standard reference method called SRM. So the lighter it is, it's a one or two, it looks like this. This is about, this is probably a four. But then a stout, dark Guinnessy stout, you're looking at like a 43. So that, that's the scale, one to a hundred, right? Okay, the last thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna last thing I'm gonna show you is so that's one ingredient is malt, and I'm gonna show you an ingredient called hops. Okay, whatever you do, do not put this in your mouth unless you want to have a bad time. Yeah, <laughs> sound good? Last time I forgot to warn, I was giving my friend some a tour, and she put a whole handful of these in here, and she did not have a good time. So what these are they're called hops. Hop pellets, T90 pellets. So hops are literal uh, herbs. They're, they're a family of the cannabis family. The, they're weeds, they grow in cone shape. What you guys will do is each of you are gonna have to grab three pellets. You're gonna put it in your hand, hold it. It's called a smell test. This is how I know uh, what hops I wanna put in a beer. So you're gonna have pellets like here. These are concentrated hops, so about, in a, about a pound's worth. I get about uh, five pounds to make up one pound's worth of hops right now, okay? So I'm sitting here and you're gonna grind it as best you can. Grind it until you can get it into a powder. And what happens is you're gonna get it look, look like it's broken up now, right? So now we were exposing those leaves and the oils. All you gotta do is cone it and gently smell. And then figure out what you get from that. You're gonna get a little bit of that orange. You're gonna get heavy lemon and you're gonna get a little bit of grapefruit on there. But citra hops are very common in IPAs or pale ales. And then feel free to throw it when you're done. Just toss it on the ground. It's that simple, I'll clean it later. So hops are there for a few reasons. Hops give us bitterness in a beer. Hops will uh, give us uh, more flavor. They'll give, you know, again, I can get lemon. I can get a hella, sometimes a lot of them from the New Zealand right now and give us tropical fruits. And then also hops are preservative. So I could put hops in a beer and actually help me maintain the life, uh, shelf life of a beer, right? So now, Let's go through the fun part. You guys, I'm assuming you guys want to do, right? So I'm gonna work you through. You guys had one beer already, so if you guys tell me you don't like beer, you already lied, because I see most of the glasses already <laughs> empty, okay? So I'm gonna work you guys through kind of a, a different spectrum of it, okay? So you all have glasses, I'm gonna hand out beer. Probably my favorite, uh, most famous keto beer. And this one won gold medal at uh, the Super Bowl competition of beers called GABF. The coolest thing about this beer, if you have coffee in a beer, it should be, it should be dark, but it's not. So it's a light beer. This is the cool nuance of it. 
So go ahead and put it to your nose. And what do you guys smell? This is the breakfast beer. So you guys came to brunch. This is the breakfast beer right here. When you guys do a pairing, this is the best part about the whole beer experience, is go ahead and grab a bite of whatever you're gonna do, throw it in your mouth, and while that's still in your mouth, go ahead and chase it with a sip of the beer. Let that beer sit and push that flavor forward. This will always be at Kitos. This is like one of our favorites to make. When we make this, it smells like a, a coffee roastery in here. It's awesome. Are there any coffee effects? Yeah, well, it takes a lot. You'll get plastered before you get more caffeine from mm. that. Yeah. <laughs> you black out before you get a caffeine bus. You can experiment if you want. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> so these guys are what are making the beer, the yeast. This one ingredient I can't have you taste because they're very delicate. They can't be exposed to sunlight and they like to, they like to be hidden. That's why you can't see anything in here. They're, they're inside. Once it consumes sugar, it'll give a CO2 and it'll give alcohol. That's their byproduct. That's why we have stuff going, blowing off of these hoses into a bucket. It's because I don't want that CO2 anywhere else, but I want it away from the beer. I want it as far away from the beer as possible. Because CO2 does have carbonic acid, and I don't want acidic beer. Acidic beer, it's gross. It's, ugh, no one likes that. Well, this is a, one of our famous beers we have. It's a session IPA. It's called Romando. Uh, we were named it after uh, Nicholas Romando. He's uh, probably Utah's best and favorite goalie. Also Mexican, so yeah. Peruvian. Peruvian, whoops, Latin. My bad. Shit. Hey, he looks Mexican to me. <laughs> my, my people. <laughs> so the hops you smell, that hop is in this beer. So see if you guys can pick out this, this hop. In Germany they say, no foam, no beer. No foam, no beer. No foam, no beer. So that citra hop literally has orange flavor profiles come through. We're going through brunch. I gave you coffee. Now this is our orange juice. That's why whenever someone comes into keto says, I don't drink beer, there's not a beer for me. We're like, nah, we got you. <laughs> we have you covered, I, I promise. W which one's better, the, the coffee or the IPA right now? I like the coffee. The coffee's better? IPA. IPA? I'm an IPA guy. I'm an IPA guy. You got guy. half and half, basically? Yeah. All right. What is this rip thingy on so, the can? That's, uh, I only see this once or twice in Utah. This is recyclable. This is not. So what this is supposed to do is we're supposed to rip it as a, as a zipper cool. if it worked. Yeah. So it's easy to rip. <clears throat> now this is recyclable. This is not. This is Oh, the. so y'all make it easier for people to recycle it. That's smart. We're eco-friendly. We're like the Prius of uh, breweries in Utah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is our number one selling beer at Kitos. This is our Blackberry Sour. We're talking about tartness. Uh -huh. So here's a, here's a beer that is mm -hmm. sour, but it's fruit forward as well. This is the prettiest beer I think we make. So this one's gonna have a lactic acid bite. When you take it, it's gonna literally open your palate up and those flavors are gonna go through. It's gonna be another experience, kinda like the apple beer I gave you guys. We got different chocolate nuts over here as well, if y'all wanna dabble. Yeah, so this one, when I say the word bright in a beer, this one's bright. This one like literally ignites your palate and ignites your mouth. Boom. And sometimes it's too much for people. Some people really like this. Just like the IPAs. Those hops really are bitter and right in your face and then sometimes it's too much for people and sometimes when you're 90 years old and have no palate, <laughs> love it. You finally like a taste again. It's a good switch up, it's yeah. different. Totally different beer. Yum. And if you wanna take the intensity up, there's uh, some apples and oranges. If you guys wanna try the oranges and the apples, you'll see how that flavor will come out. This one's actually an invention of mine at Kitos. This one's unlabeled. So this one's kind of secret and sexy. Ooh. Secret Ooh. and sexy. But it depends if you're gonna like, uh, this one's uh, the dessert beer, if you will. Dessert beer? But the thing about it is this one's a beer flavored beer, so it's still gonna taste like beer, but I'm hiding it. And it's cold. It's cold. What's yours? So what I would do, before you drink this beer, what I would do is grab some of that badass bread. The bread's gonna neutralize that tartness that we have. Whoa, I don't want you guys to go from hella tart to this Ooh, flavor get yet. Some of so get some bread, neutralize that, or switch it with the coffee beer, whatever you want. So this beer is available only at Kitos. Uh, we haven't really seen cans yet, but it's on draft. This is our chocolate raspberry stout. So this one we came out a couple of months ago. This one's a hot seller. This one's really fun. So then I recommend this one. Mm. Recommend with the Twizzler and or that chocolate because that will pop. And those bright tanks, I'll let it stir up a little bit and then I can it or I'll keg it and that's where I'm capturing those flavors. If I do, if I do the raspberry or any fruit flavoring before it gets the beers done, I can actually uh, 
dissolve or take away from those flavors, but yeah. keep the bitterness or the tartness. Yeah, exactly. So that means if I did the raspberries in the, in the hot side, I'd get that raspberry tartness, but not the flavor of the raspberry. You know, that's, that's my goal when I make a beer maker. I see an end product and then I have to work backwards to try to figure out how to make that. And that's kind of my... That's good. That's what do you call it? That is good. Kink, and I guess? Your picky ass. Your picky exactly ass work? like it. You want to blend that blackberry in there a little bit. Mm. Put that blackberry sour inside mm -hmm. that raspberry. That, that, the uh, depth of that stout will actually help calm down that lactic acid in that blackberry. So you can get, if you want to do a little blackberry stout. I know when you taste wine, you're supposed to smell it first. Yeah. What's the best way to taste beer? Absolutely, same way as a mm. wine, but uh, wine, you take sips at it, right? Breathe air on it, yeah. I wouldn't recommend that in the beer world. Because <laughs> uh, it's just not the same, but you get, it's kind of almost like wine, but without that aeration inside of it. Because uh, the, the biggest enemy of beer is, is oxygen. Uh, so in tasting, huh. what you want to do is, I, I like to, uh, when you smell beer, I don't know if you smell like a wine, but you're actually supposed to open your mouth while you smell. So what happens is you create that a flow, circulation huh? through your nasal cavities. That's how you're supposed to smell it. But then you always want to, you see beer makers or beer, people drinking beer swirling it. I told you that foam, the aromatic, you're releasing aromatics. And wine, you're actually adding oxygen in there, right? You're adding that. Then you, when I, when I smell, oh. and then I'll drink it, then I'll go back for a smell, and then I'll drink it while they're still in my mouth and smell. Because mm -hmm. now it's in your palate, and you're gonna see. What we're looking for is off flavors. We're looking for anything that oh, that's off-putting, like gross. Anything that's Yo. oniony, anything that's uh, That like became unpleasant, way more basically. chocolatey doing that. I'm not a fan of chocolate, but that was actually good. It has yeah. thrown so me. That's on crazy. Your the stout? Yeah. You guys yeah. said earlier that it's kind of espresso-y. So in this stout, you get almost an espresso. So also, the yeah, thing about it so is not all beer should be served cold. So you'll see a lot of beer makers actually hold their beer and warm it up because it will oh, change with uh, temperature and with light. So I can put this out in the sunlight for five minutes and it will change completely. That's why you don't see beer in clear cans. Or if you do see them in like brown bottles or yellow bottle, bottles or green bottles, light's affecting it. UV light, that's, you guys have Heineken or oh, Corona. No. That skunkiness comes from UV light. Ah. So green, green bottles limit light. Brown bottles limit even more, it's but that clear bottles of Corona, <laughs> it's just straight UV. So you get hella stinky. And some people like that skunkiness. So if you ever had Corona in a keg that's never seen light versus Corona in a bottle, completely different beers. <laughs> but that's the spectrum. You guys have went through a light beer, somewhat fruity, some beers, beers, some IPA, some bitterness, and you went to kind of darker, desserty beers. For me, it's uh, beer drinking is uh, an experience. It's who you're drinking it with, where you're drinking it, what environment, what food's in front of you, and a community. That's why I'm, I'm so involved in, in the community here is, yeah. it's just beautiful. Like, everyone's making an IPA, everyone's making a different coffee beer. Right. How are you making it? What's your technique? You know, I'll try mine. Yeah. Let's just talk. Let's talk shop. Let's commute. It's beautiful. You guys mingle. I'm going to grab some more beers. I'll but talk. when you guys are done, uh, Andrew's been, uh, uh, as a thank you guys for coming here, we're going to uh, open up Pinball Ooh. on the front of the house. Uh, I call it clicking and clacking. Mm -hmm. so if you guys are near pinball, we're, we're really good pinballers here. We have pinball tournaments every Tuesday. It's all about pinball here. We love it. And like this shirt's got pinball all over it. But if you guys haven't played pinball, I really recommend it because you'll start giggling like a schoolgirl. It's so fun. <laughs> Give him a hand. Um, David was so gracious to do this. Everything we're doing is for a nonprofit, actually, it's for the Mecca Project. Um, I sit on the board of it, so like one of my things is like, hey, if I'm gonna sit on the board of something, I actually wanna do a lot of cool things about it, but not just give money, right? I wanna like do fun shit to build money and then give that away, right? So he was gracious enough to do this tour and all the funds go to that as well. So thank you all for showing up. Thank you for the VIPs from the previous events as well to show up as well. Um, but yeah. Now you know Keto's Brewery. Thank you all, um, but please mingle, talk, get to know each other, and yeah, we'll just drink until we're, we get kicked out. <laughs> so the nonprofit is the Mecca Project, all right? The Mecca Project, and what that's on is just free education, best-in-class technology, as well as mental health resources for teens and young adults. But thank you all for supporting, thank you for coming out, and we really do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, guys. How we doing over here? Good. What was your favorite? IPA? What was yours? 
I like them all. Yeah, <laughs> it all goes down. <laughs> what was your favorite? The uh, raspberry sour. Really? You're a sour guy. Amber, which one? What do you like? Really? That's so interesting. Okay, no, that's good to know. That's good to know. What about you all down here? What did y'all like the most? I think the combo of the stout and the, the blackberry sour. Oh, so you, uh, you got brave and mixed them. Yeah. It's either that or the IPA. I haven't, no, but he's he said it was actually good. I'm curious to learn more about the Mecca project. That's yes. Cool. So are you guys working with, um, so I work at the health department. Well, we're just open to anyone. Um, I came on literally the end of last year, I should say, I became a board member. Um, which was my first event I did was the wine event that these events are piggybacking off. Um, but yeah, my part in it is the mental health. So I'm a sports psych, mental health, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that's why I was interested in it. And it's teens and young adults, which I love to work with more. So when they brought me on board, I was like, oh, perfect. Well, I want to bring it to Chicago, if that's okay, which there's like, it doesn't matter. As long as it's teens and young adults. Um, so who we're connected to now, we're, we got a few foundations. I just got one the other day. His name is Levi. What he does is literally his nonprofit raises money for young and teens and adults. So he's literally pipelining to us as well. Um, connection with UVU is pipelining into here because I work there as well. So anything I'm attached to is pipelining to the Mecca as well. Yeah. So really... Well, because the reason I ask is yeah. we're developing the Utah Health Improvement Plan right now and one Ooh. of the focuses is connectedness. I love that. Um, and like social connectedness and isolation, and social isolation. Ooh. And so I think that your the Mecca project would be an interesting yeah. avenue to try and partner with for some of the activities. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't know your emotions in real time. Most people can't even put a name to it. We know, like, I mean, if I say, hey, how you doing? He's going to say, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Not knowing there's worlds of things going on. Yeah. But language, the fact that we're missing language is why we can't put indicators out there. Yeah. So depression is one of the biggest ones. Mm -hmm. Counterfeit emotions as well, right? What we say is sad may not be sad. There's another name for it. Just like there's a lot of nice people, but not everyone nice is kind. Yeah. Counterfeit emotions. So I look into a lot of what's this a counterfeit emotion of something to kind of get indicators. We're not taught. Exactly. We're not, We're not taught, taught like, to look for the, the things in which. Yeah. And so, uh, I want to rub that off, but I don't. I'm not sure if that's. Go for it. Go for it. Oh man, that's your fault. You came here with him, right? <laughs> Yeah, you yeah, had like, it was like charcoal or something, right? It was like a dark spot. <laughs> Apparently, I have bad friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, he saw it. That's why I was like, you know what? I got to wipe this. <laughs> I'm the type, tell me if my fly down, if I got tissue on my foot. Just tell me, because I'm going to tell you. Did you open the door for her to come in? No, he didn't hold the Might door. Might have been you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she didn't tell you. <laughs> you know what? Let me do this. I'm going to reach out. <laughs> let me leave, let me leave y'all. I'm going to reach out. Let me walk away before I cause more trouble. Gosh, you got a guy on a horse and pulling some guy on the skis. Mm -hmm. and like, like these rings and do this stuff. Okay. I like shit like that. So, nice. It was awesome. Nice. Dope. Yeah, see, I need to do that. Mm -hmm. Do we have the biggest pinball selection, Andrew? Or? Uh, yes, and we're the number one rated pinball officially. Yeah, so we're number one oh. rated pinball. But we just released the, the Jaws. Uh, this one's my favorite at the moment. We're the number one rated spot for pinball in Utah, and we have the biggest pinball location. Okay. So every they host Tuesdays, tournaments. Every yes. Tuesday night they have tournaments. Yeah, I've heard you say that. These don't stay here, though. They, they switch rotate. out. Yeah. Oh, he got the gay beer. Okay, perfect. Go ahead and set a quick record and get up out of here. No. So Stern is the pinball machine company. They're the ones that we do. Like, they'll have you scan a code. So when you have a code, let me log in. So you have like a your own profile. So it keeps track of the scores on any machine you ever play across the country. So then what I'll do is I have now my QR code. I literally press right here. Boom, it has my... And now we click and clack. So cool. 